Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Happy Halloween. Um, I'm Jack Sparrow, Dr. Misha Kogan, Associate Professor of Medicine at uh, GW and uh, Medical Director of Center for Integrative Medicine. Uh, welcome to our GW Center for Integrative Medicine podcast and Zoomcast and YouTube channel. Um, keeping with the topic of Halloween, I'm going to talk about the this recent news that I was reading from, um, I believe it's in Arizona, um, basically um, the death that occurred in Texas, my, my apologies, in Texas, in the medical spa, uh, where physician uh, was not present um, and the patient was getting the intravenous nutrients administered and apparently had a cardiac arrest and passed. Um, so topic appropriate for Halloween, scary kind of news, but I wanted to kind of cover this more as a broad, uh, what, are the, what are the indications for IV nutrients? The, the spa uh, vitamins intravenously seem to be everywhere. Uh, there is a lot of advertisement about how they can help with, uh, you know, after drinking alcohol uh, the next day and, and youth for all kinds of things. So I'm gonna share just a, for a brief period of time, I'm gonna share the screen just to show you the, the articles. So this was on uh, NBC uh, in Texas and basically saying, Frisco physician medical license temporary suspended after death in med spot. Um, so this is the article. I'll make sure, of course, I'll put that in the, in the uh, description of the video, but you know, it, it's obviously scary physician was not in, uh, present at the at the time during the infusion. Um, the owner uh, of the place, Amber Johnson, uh, who was administered IV, the therapy at that particular was not only not licensed to perform IV treatment, but was just not licensed practitioner at all. Um, so unfortunately, this is common. Uh, unfortunately, there is a kind of a spa slash wellness propagation that IV nutrients is safe. Unfortunately, there's a lot of misunderstanding and misinformation. Um, it's kind of sad to realize that people would um, actually buy into this kind of uh, wellness talk um, and realize that IV nutrients are completely side effect free and you can just walk into some spa and without any medical supervision get it so but they do have place so iv nutrients are not complete bogus um they have particular place uh, they're actually quite effective for certain things i'm going to kind of briefly talk a little bit about evidence uh, those of you who have seen some of my prior videos for example have seen the mistletoe for cancer intravenously seems to be a uh, rapidly gaining momentum uh, due to uh, uh, John Hopkins randomized controlled trial that actually showed pretty dramatic benefit for metastatic cancers of all kinds. And we've been doing that for a long time in a clinical practice. Similarly, high dose vitamin C uh, work of Mark Levine at, at, and John Hopkins at uh, NIH and many others demonstrated it being relatively safe in the right uh, scenario and also being effective for certain cancers. So those are the kind of more therapeutic applications. Now, the the what was given to this patient by the looks of it, uh, who passed was the what we often call Myers cocktail, or it's a combination of different B vitamins with vitamin C. However, for some strange reason, in this particular said story, the TPN was mixed to it, and that was a major problem. Like we never mix TPN as a total parental nutrition; it must be administered in a hospital or at the uh, supervision of a home agency of some sort with a nurse, at least a nurse present during administration. So TPN is uh, all, of the, all of the nutrients. So it's not just vitamins and nutrients, but it's also fats, lipids, and amino acids. It's much more complex solution. It, it, and what happened here is the patient had electrolyte disturbance, which is again, that's why you monitor patients like this. And that's why you absolutely have to uh, get levels of nutrients before and, and know the patient very well. You can't just have somebody walk into from the street, which is what happened here, and just administer stuff like this because they have dehydration after drinking heavily the day before. Um, so let's come back to, to sort of what we do. So we do administer Myers cocktail, uh, as I said, B-complex magnesium, uh, 
um, vitamin C. Those are the most common ones. There's sometimes we put other things in them in the um, in in the Myers cocktail, but those are the most important ones, the most common ones. And and this can be used for chronic fatigue. It can be relatively effective for things like, for example long COVID or fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome. So for those conditions, there's actually some evidence that this is beneficial. Um, if you're talking more about just high dose hydration, when you give something like normal saline, maybe with some B vitamins only and no minerals, no vitamin C, et cetera, that can be done as well, relatively safe. But again, you have to do it in a clinical setting. So you have to make sure it's administered with uh, at least a nurse on staff and that the clinic is equipped for emergencies. Why? Well, even when you administer pure saline, there could be some disturbances. The blood pressure can change. A uh, patient can get all kinds of sl slight shifts and those shifts can end up, end up being catastrophic. Uh, like an allergy can occur from anything. Allergy can occur from the tubing, from the needle itself, from stuff that is uh, the, the bag in which the fluid sits. So you can have microscopic amount of plastic um, and, and that's enough to trigger the allergic reaction. So it could be anything. And that's why no IVs should ever be done without medical supervision. Absolutely no IVs in medical spas under any circumstances for any reason, even if it's just the basic hydration. And the reason for that is unfortunately you know, just like in this case is obvious because things can happen. They do happen. Um, just to give an example out of, um, let's say in the last 10 years of us doing, you know, tens, if not you know, tens of thousands of IVs, we see a significant complication once or twice a year. Uh, we see things like high blood pressure, we have allergic reactions, we see, you um, kind of a sudden in, in um, very common things are when IV goes not precisely right when the catheter does not end up staying in the vessel and kind of migrate slightly and so then the the fluid leaks into the peripheral tissue next to the vessel in which it's supposed to go and then there's a there's of course bruise and the pain and and, and and discomfort and redness so that is relatively common usually a minor thing you remove the line you put warm compress on uh, you put apply some pressure and usually it goes away in a day or two and the bruise resolves in a week um you know but with some ivs like mistletoe for example the complications are much more common because the mistletoe is very profound at triggering immune response. So patients can get flu-like symptoms right away. They can have their blood pressure go up. They may feel hot. They may actually start having allergic reaction. Like uh, we haven't seen a frank anaphylaxis. We've um, about seven or eight years ago, we've transitioned away from using ascorbic acid from corn to using ascorbic acid from either vitamin C, from either tapioca or from um, cassava. And that seemed to eliminate or significantly decrease, not fully eliminate, but significantly decrease risk of allergic reactions. And since then, we actually have not seen, I would say, any allergic reaction, serious allergic reaction to vitamin C. So I think the corn derived vitamin C, which are in most uh, clinics use because they're cheaper, those are the ones that can trigger allergic reaction. And we've seen that probably a couple of times a year before we switched. So um, I will put the links to our IV program and, and some of our descriptions of some of the IV vitamins that we use. For example, I didn't discuss uh, using lipids and using glutathione and using uh, chelation, using um, things like, well, lipid exchange is what we call phosphat phosphatidylcholine, which is very effective for detoxification can also be used for certain types of strokes and even for some neurocognitive decline. So there's a lot of applications for IVs. Again, make sure you talk to a physician or clinician who knows how to apply them. Make sure that there's a full understanding of how the IVs are administered in the particular center. Make sure that there is not just a supervisor who is uh, checking in with the nursing staff or infusionist staff who's licensed appropriately, but also that that particular provider um, oversees it and understands exactly what you're getting. So there's no um, there's no sudden changes in uh, different uh, solutions and there's no oversight of that. Um, so 
hopefully that this was helpful. Um, and again, I put all the links to this article. And if you have any questions, post them here. And I'll see you back after the Halloween. Hopefully you'll survive the Day of the Dead um, and um, you'll enjoy it. I think it's an important reminder for us, for our own mortality and for, and in a way, I think with all the troubles in the world at the moment, I think it's not a bad idea for us to have a day of thinking about this a little bit lighter. Stay safe, friends. Um, stay spooky and good Halloween to everybody. Bye. And subscribe to this channel. Uh, my wife keeps reminding me that I should say this every time. Bye.